recess, abscess, and awareness. It is no secret that since we made that £28 billion announcement in 2021, the economy has changed for the worse. These are the interesting times. Hello everyone, my name's Matt Johnston and welcome to The Interesting Times, a political comedy show from right here in the UK. So, Parliament is actually in recess at the moment, until the 18th. So while the rats are away, the public will pay. On Friday, ministers had attempted to leak out six pieces of bad news, but were caught red-handed by the red top, the mirror no less. So much for Sunak's time to reflect. Things that are left in the in-tray for the next week or so include an attempt to water down the compensation payments to those affected by the blood transfusion scandal, believed to be the worst treatment disaster in the history of the NHS. There are some individuals praying for an ITV drama. No fault evictions are going up, despite the government saying that they would introduce legislation last year to stop it. On an, I'm sure, entirely unrelated note, whilst less than 5% of the UK population are landlords, the figure rises to 13% amongst Conservative MPs. But if they had some substandard accommodation, then they couldn't even have leased it to an asylum seeker, as legislation that they tried to bring in has been shelved by the government before they were stopped by a claim being made through the courts. That's bad news for the Tories. And Tories stopped from treating asylum seekers appallingly by the law is both an anthem of the last 14 years and no doubt their slogan for the next general election. Still, at least in November, we'll be able to give notice to repossess this property. Fourth is the schools falling in on children's heads. Remember that? And that was just over 100? Yeah, it's now double that. In fact, 234 schools have been found to have that structurally unsound concrete. State schools, obviously. But if the schools are in a rotten state of decay, children's teeth aren't doing a whole lot better, as at number five, a lack of NHS dentists mean that 48,000 children had to be referred to A&E for extractions. And you thought this government stopped at taking a piss. And finally, at number six, the unions. Having insulted the junior doctors, the train drivers, the government's decided to make it a hat-trick and introduce draconian legislation on fire services to have minimum service levels, which would mean 73% of fire engine crews having to report to work whilst industrial action is ongoing. Making a point of striking pretty pointless, which, if you're the Conservative Party, is the point. But there's also one more thing. Rishi Sunak was trying to clear off for half term by releasing his tax return. Rishi Rich is at it again at an eye-watering rate of £2.3 million that he earned. But there's one more thing. Rishi Sunak was also trying to clear off for half term by releasing his tax return. Rishi Rich is at it again. And last year, he contributed a whopping £500,000 to the economy at an eye-watering rate of £2.3 million that he earned. Sorry, made. So what's the issue? Well, he's able to pay at a lower rate of tax because a large part of his income isn't income. It's capital gains, which is tax lower than income, meaning overall Rishi pays tax at a rate of 23%, about the same as a teacher making £41,000 a year. I'm reminded of a George Burns quote. If you want to know what God thinks of money, look at the people he gives it to. So it does seem to have been a decade of decay. Dentists say the NHS dentistry recovery plan is not worthy of the name. Is it time to invest in a pair of pliers? This is a news that people are queuing like Eastern Europeans in the 80s for McDonald's to get access to an NHS dentist. So why is this? Well, the government has reduced the budget to NHS dentistry by £500 million pounds since 2014. Or have they? Health Secretary and State of the Nation in ministerial form, Victoria Sponge for Brains Atkins went on to BBC Breakfast and was asked if the budget was lower than it was. Am I right in thinking that actually the budget for NHS dentistry has dropped 
by £500 million since 2014. So you might be putting in an extra £200 million, but that's from a point where their budget is hugely smaller than it was 10 years ago. So the, I mean, a lot has happened since 2014, but we... The budget's uh, dropped, we, hasn't it? We have, um, we have, our budget is £3 billion. As I say, that is a Which lot is of lower money. Than and it was. indeed, get that help that they need if they're adults. Just to bring you back one more time, is the budget lower than it was? So the budget is three billion pounds. But is that Again, lower than it I was? Say, you know that is a. But is it lower is than it real, was? Well, it's it's three. It's a three billion pound budget. So is it um, lower? Uh, and uh, the, the, a lot has happened in in those uh, so ten years. Yes. That you're two hundred million pounds on top of the three billion pounds. Additional after a budget cut. A little cut. bit rich. To be fair, she should have asked her if it was lower. Victoria Atkins, whose husband is managing director of British Sugar, though at least has some advice for those considering DIY dentistry. Today, we're speaking to Caroline from Scunthorpe. She's pulled out 12 of her own teeth with pliers because she can't get an NHS dentist. It's just disgraceful that's happening in, in 21st century Britain. Yeah, and look, it's, it's somebody in that amount of pain must always remember that if they need to, then they can go to their local accident and emergency ward to get help. And if that doesn't work, we're giving everyone 10% off at B&Q. For those sat watching this video thinking, I didn't know A&E had dentists. They don't. They would only deal with emergencies. You know, the E part. Sending someone to A&E makes no sense. And if it's got to the point where you need to go to A&E, then things will have gotten so badly, you'll need to go to A&E. It's the equivalent of getting rid of piles by stuffing a live hand grenade down the back of your pants. But maybe this year we could get to the root of the problem and have ourselves an extraction. I'm saying we should brace ourselves for a general election. That would crown a perfect year. I don't think we'll be putting up a plaque for these Tories. Sorry, sorry, no more dental jokes. I'm sure that must get on your nerve. Following Rishi's desire that everyone should get more mass literate, the BBC seemed to be starting its own educational programme. As star of Dragon's Den and the bottom line, Evan Davis sat down with Laura to go through some really rather basic mass problems that she was having trouble with. Laura is 39, lives in Seven Oaks with her husband and three children. She describes her hobbies as scuba diving and playing tennis, and in her spare time is chief secretary to the treasury. Ah, oh, that's nice. What is puzzling me is how you can be even talking about tax cuts when a central pledge is getting debt down and debt is going up. So the central pledge is one of our fiscal rules, which the, is that debt needs to be falling over the five-year fiscal forecast as a percentage of GDP, which, which it is. No, it's uh, higher in five years than now. Not as a percentage of GDP. Yeah, yeah no, it's higher. It's going up 23.4, 89% of GDP. 28.9, it's 93% of GDP. Debt goes up. It falls at the end of five years a little yes. bit. But that, that doesn't mean debt is coming down. That means debt is going up. It's higher. It's higher in five years than now. It's falling as a, well, as a percentage of GDP. It's no, higher, it's higher as a percentage of GDP. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think well, this is well, really it's... basic. I'm looking at the latest OBR table. Public sector net debt, debt ex Bank of England, 289, 92.8%, 23.4, 89%. So it's up in five years. Now, I'm amazed that you don't know that debt is rising, but you're no, the one who's planning. Of GDP, I'm, I'm looking at 100... the percentage of GDP. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I think I, I need to have the figures. I, I've got different figures, which I just, which, uh, so I think we just need to. But Evan doesn't just do maths, he's quite the English whiz too. So let's see if Laura can spell hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Can you give me an example, Evan? I mean, we could talk about some of the U-turns that your own government has made. You will have made them. Your manifesto said no rise in national insurance. Then there was a rise in national insurance. That was reversed. You said there would be a health and social care levy. It was planned at the same time, in fact, the same month as the Green Prosperity Plan. That's been abandoned. There was going to be social care reform. That's gone. HS2, that's gone. The electric car mandate, 2030, now 2035. Immigration reform, that was introduced by your government. It's been reformed by your government. One of the reforms to pare back the immigration reform, that's been partially restored. So that's not, that's been U-turned on a U-turn. 
We've had smaller ones like railway station ticket halls. They were going to go. They're not. Fines for missing GP appointments. They were going to be imposed. They're not. There was going to be a bonfire of EU law. There was a, a reversal on that. Ah, but Labour have done loads more. In fact, by the time this video goes out, Labour will have U-turned on 5,000 squillion things and still not stop one boat. And I'm definitely, probably, maybe, certainly not making that up. Labour have, in fact, gone back on their £28 billion Green Pledge. Yes, great British energy. Nanny, you foreign muck. Can we just stop with the great British crap, please? Electricity is electricity and gas is gas. You know, energy is energy. It's more important that these energy sources are sustainable and clean, which is why it's disappointing that Labour have rode back on it. You'll carry on backing Labour financially, will you? Well, I will carry on uh, backing them. I think the most important thing uh, for us as a nation now is to have a Labour government. Yes, for you start choice between sanity and fossil fools. Now, I'm pretty sure that coal, 100 million years ago, was trees and plants. Is that right, Jacob? It was. So I would, I would argue that that's sustainable. The situation, as I mentioned before, is Labour, to a point, don't know what's likely to face them when, if, they get into power. The way Sunak's been so flimpler over the date of the next election and some of the tactics the Tories are employing, they aren't going to go quietly. I wouldn't be surprised to see the bailiffs being called in to change the locks at number 10. Starmer having to reconnect the gas, electric, and get someone to get rid of the readies for Rishi graffiti on the walls. We're streeting the shadow secretary of state for health and social care on Thursday's question time, put it best. That since we made that £28 billion announcement in 2021, the economy has changed for the worse, the cost of borrowing has quadrupled, and that is in no small part thanks to the disastrous mini-budget, which has not only trashed the nation's finances, it means that families across the country are having to make even harder choices than we are as politicians. He's right. They can't plan for the Tories. I mean, who can, beyond stocking up on tin food and holding your loved ones close? Think of it like this. The Tories and Labour are in the car, and the public are in the back. It's a big car. So, the public say we'd like something to eat. Labour say there's a cafe a half mile up the road. We'll go there. Then the Tories turn right, of course, and are going in completely the wrong direction as they spotted a Michelin's three-star restaurant that won't serve you if you didn't go to Eton and they'll probably tell the rest of us to wait in the car. Now, we're three plus miles away from the cafe. It's pretty stupid for the public to then tap Labour on the shoulder and say, I thought you said the cafe was only a half a mile up the road. Typical Labour. Then Liz Truss gets in and drives us off a cliff. And that's where we are now, on a beach in an upside-down car waiting for the ambulance to arrive in the form of a general election. With Rishi Sunak telling us that his plan to warm us all up by setting fire to the petrol tank is working. And Liz Truss blaming the crash on woke steering. I won't lie, it's not a great or indeed working analogy, but you get my dress. And sorry, I'm a big fan of Victoria Derbyshire, but this line of questioning is, well, odd. Of a cast iron agree to our audience that you won't water what you've announced today down between now and the election. Well, this is going in the manifesto. This is the manifesto submission. So, so, so just say, yes, I can give a cast iron guarantee. Yes, this is going in the manifesto. It's a cast iron guarantee. Whatever language you use, yes, this is a well, this is a, all right, cast iron guarantee. Language, yeah, yeah this, is, this, is, this is what's going in the manifesto. It's not going to water, be watered down. No. Can you give a cast iron guarantee? You are 100% going to hit clean energy by 2030. Yes, cast iron guarantee, pinky promise, cross my heart and hope to get elected. So, what happened? This happened. And if that's not bad enough, having wasted £30 billion, she's now screwing over the planet by wasting paper. This, by the way, isn't something I've knocked up on Photoshop. It's real. With a sub-headline, the only conservative in the room without a clue what's going on. And that's it. No time to talk about the fact that this coming Thursday, there's an election happening where you finally get the chance to vote out the Tory, provided you live in Wellingborough. So, how is it going to go? Well, the polling seems to suggest that the new candidate, no, not Peter Bone, that would be ridiculous. It's Peter Bone's girlfriend, Helen Harrison. What a lovely pair of boneheads. Anyway, the polling seems to suggest that although the Tories have a majority of nearly 20,000, 
that could be wiped out on Thursday. But there's one thing these pollsters haven't counted on. The great British electorate. Do you still think that you might be tempted to vote Conservative? Yes. Yeah. Purely just because I want to see them have the chance to pull everything round. Yes, you're not going to get me with that snake oil again. I think I'll take a bottle of uh, Serpent Slick instead. Ah. Warning, may force you to take out your teeth with pliers. But that isn't the only by-election happening. Chris Skidmore resigned his seat in process at the government's lack of green commitments. And so Lee Anderson, seen here on a fittingly empty top deck, and as one of the <clears throat> popular conservatives, was on hand to give some support to prospective conservative candidate Sam Bromley. Hi, Oxley Anderson, Member of Parliament for Ashfield and Eastwood, here in Kingswood on the by-election campaign. We're on the buses, and we're on the buses with Sam Bromley. He's our brilliant uh, uh, candidate for this by-election. This is a really important by-election. You know, we've got a Labour council helping on ignoring local people. Now, local people have been ignored by Labour around here for years and years and years. Yes, Labour councillors haven't done anything for the people of Kingswood for years and years and years. Unlike the Tory MP, who did the best thing that they could possibly do and resigned. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, please feel free to share, like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you next Sunday. Take care.